Welcome to Cardiovascular Innovations 2020. My name is Mazen Abu Fadel, and I'm an interventional cardiologist at the Oklahoma Heart Hospital, North Campus, and a clinical professor of medicine at the University of Oklahoma. Today, we're going to be discussing techniques for removing difficult IVC filters. This is a very challenging but rewarding procedure. I have no disclosures related to there are a variety of filters, all sizes, models, and shapes, and their use is very important and the proper indication. However, uh, if not taken out in a timely fashion, can become a big challenge to remove. Some of these filters are designed to be retrievable, others are designed to be permanent, and uh, some of the retrievable ones unfortunately are retrieved in time. The use of these IVC filters have been increasing since 1973, the IVC retrieval rate of the filters is only 34%. The majority of the IVC filters can be removed using standard techniques, just a snare and a sheath to remove them. However, the 10 to 20% that cannot be removed when stay for a long time can be very challenging. The most common reason for difficult retrieval is really tilting of the filter. The filter uh, can be embedded or tilted. If it's not, then standard techniques can very easily work. If that fails, of course, you can go to advanced retrieval techniques. Advanced retrieval techniques are many. Some of them uh, can uh, include like loop wire, balloon assisted, laser assisted, or even forceps assisted. We'll talk about all these. Standard retrieval is pretty easy. You try to find the snare that you like, try to find uh, the sheath, usually seven or eight French. Some of the kits come with a larger sheath, and then you try to get the hook of the filter into the sheath. Sometimes the filter is tilted and you need to realign it a little bit before you uh, retrieve it. And thankfully, the Vena system is a little bit more um, or a little bit less problematic than arterial systems. So we can remove the filter, even though it's embedded in the artery, it won't bleed or perforate as much. So you can use this realignment technique using a loop snare or a single axis just from the juggler usually, and using a curved guide catheter, direct the snare to the wall uh, where the uh, hook is and try to hook it, straighten it, and then you get the sheath on top of it and you retrieve the some other techniques, in, including um, a stiff wire displacement, where you can put a very stiff wire uh, behind the filter towards the wall it's tilted to, and the stiff wire can straighten the filter enough where you can actually uh, retrieve it using uh, a regular snare. Other techniques include the dual access techniques, where you have a wire and a snare uh, with dual access. Uh, you can get a wire from above, um, and then a snare from below to snare the wire and then when you pull on the wire with the snare from the femoral axis you can displace the filter and tilt it once the filter is displaced to the middle of the uh, vena cava then ad advancing a snare and retrieving it should uh, be what about the uh, loop wire technique the loop wire retrieval technique um, getting a catheter with a hook some people uh, use a SIMS catheter, AL1 catheter, or other catheters. Then you get a wire uh, through uh, the feet of the filter, um, and then you snare the wire from another axis uh, from above. Uh, once you snare the wire, then you have the wire uh, looped around the apex of the filter, not necessarily around the hook itself. And then you can uh, use that wire that now has become like a snare uh, to retrieve the filter. This is an example here of uh, the uh, wire going around the filter, uh, and then you can either retrieve it or snare it, uh, externalize it, and then retrieve. Uh. The uh, balloon assisted technique involves uh, placing a balloon uh, behind the filter where it's uh, attached to the wall of the IVC and then inflating the balloon to move the filter. Once the filter is moved, uh, then uh, you can 
<clears throat> this is called balloon assisted technique here you can see the balloon inflated trying to move the filter to allow us to get the snare to retrieve it and once the snare is, uh, is uh, attached to the filter uh, you can retrieve it there are some filters for which we use a cone retriever it's uh, very easy to retrieve with a cone if the filter is well centered however if the filter is um, not well centered the cone cannot come over the apex of the filter and then it has to come on the side of the filter to do that we can modify the retrieve uh, the filter because once the um, the cone grabs the filter from the side the tip of the filter and the hook will not enter the sheath so you have to cut and modify the sheath to help you advance Dissection technique using laser is one of my favorite techniques. Uh, this is for very embedded uh, filters and bad. Um, you can either hook them with a regular snare. Sometimes we have to hook them uh, with, with a loop wire, uh, but then you advance uh, the uh, 14 French laser. It's like doing a lead extraction. This usually uh, is placed uh, through a 16 French sheet from the juggler, uh, and then you can lace the filter um, and it will come out very uh, easily and nicely. Uh, we've done a number of these cases and all of them have successfully been retrieved without uh, really bad secrets. One of the techniques I've not used uh, is the dissection technique using rigid bron bronchoscopy or forceps. Um, uh, this will help uh, capture the filter or will help uh, even capture parts of the filter and take them out one by one until the whole filter is out. This of course has a high perforation rate if you capture the IVC by mistake. Uh, so adequate uh, experience is very important and knowing what to do and looking at it in different angles will be also very important. These are some examples of how the uh, forceps can uh, you know, catch the filter. Of course, the filter can end up uh, coming out in pieces, which can be a problem due to um, the pieces actually embolizing going to the right atrium or right ventricle or even pulmonary arteries. We've seen a couple of uh, cases where uh, IVC filter was broke trying to retrieve it and the patient presented to our institution with pericardial tamponade from perforation. So complications of retrieval of IVC uh, filters include IVC injury, uh, breach of the wall, or IVC stenosis, or pseudoaneurysm. Filter fragmentation can embolize, as we just discussed. Complications of unretrieved filter, of course, will increase the risk of DVT, IVC thrombosis, which is sometimes very difficult to uh, do interventions on, and then penetration of the filter's leg beyond the IVC wall and cause visceral injury. I've seen a patient where she had an IVC and got pregnant and her IVC, one of the legs was actually in the uterus when the uterus started um, growing, so it's a big problem. Filter migration uh, also uh, for filters that are undersized can happen. In conclusion, patients with retrievable IVC filters should be followed very closely to arrange for prompt retrieval as soon as possible. In complex cases, the risk of using advanced retrieval techniques should be weighed against the risk of leaving the filter permanently indwelling. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you are enjoying the uh, conference. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email me at this email.